More perspective now from CNN legal analyst Karen Friedman Agnifilo and Jennifer Rogers, also CNN election law analyst Rick Hassan, author of the soon to be published new book, A Real Right to Vote How a Constitutional Amendment Can Safeguard American Democracy. So, uh, Jennifer, I mean, you have oral arguments scheduled to begin February 8th. What does the timing look like to you? Well, it's obvious that the court really wanted to jump in quickly here because the primaries are approaching. And everyone's talking about the fact that the uh, decisions were stayed. The Colorado decision to take Trump off the ballot was stayed. So he won't be off the ballot regardless of how long the court takes with it. Um, but the plaintiffs won below, right? The people who wanted Donald Trump off the ballot won. So it kind of hurts them if he ends up on the ballot. So I think the court kind of recognizes the stakes with the approaching primaries and really wants to get this done quickly. Mm -hmm. And the parties have briefed all of this below. It's not like anyone's going to be disadvantaged. Everyone will have their say. The court will have enough time to decide, but they're going to move it really swiftly. That says a lot about what they think about the stakes and how important that they are treating this in terms of, I think, their own legitimacy, understanding that they've taken some real hits in recent years. Karen, I want to play some of what one of the former president's lawyers said on Fox last night about this case. And this was obviously before today's official decision from the Supreme Court. I think it should be a slam dunk in the Supreme Court. I have faith in them. You know, people like um, Kavanaugh, who the president fought for, who the president went through hell to get into place, he'll step up. Those people will step up, not because they're pro-Trump, but because, because they're pro-law, because they're pro-fairness. And the law on this is very clear. How do you interpret that? It sounds like a dog whistle to me. I mean, that is an absolute message to Brett Kavanaugh through his spokesperson and his lawyer that, look, I went through hell for you. I stepped up for you. If you recall, those hearings were quite contentious with the accusations uh, of sexual assault against Brett Kavanaugh. And basically, Trump is is signaling that he expects uh, Brett Kavanaugh to step up. Right. I mean, her her argument just on the face of it, it doesn't make any sense that, you know, because he went through hell for the, for Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh should step up for him, but not because he went through hell for Kavanaugh, but because he cares about the law. Yeah, well, the law here, there are some questions I think that the Supreme Court will have to grapple with. One of them is, does the 14th Amendment apply to the president? In other words, is the president an officer? Because it's not named. He's not named as a, a title or, or a job description in that amendment. I think it's pretty clear it does apply to the presidency. Another question that I think he also is arguing, Trump, is that he didn't uh, take an oath to support the Constitution, which, again, I think that falls flat. But I think where they're potentially going to consider whether it applies to Trump is, does it make sense? Is this, is this a qualification like age or where you were born that a state can just determine like that? Or is it kind of complicated and it's something that Congress has to decide and determine what is an insurrection and whether someone engaged in it. And I think that's going to be the, the major question that they grapple with. Rick, we don't know how narrow a ruling the Supreme Court might come back with. I mean, there, there are obviously questions about whether the president is considered, as, as uh, we were just talking about, an officer of the, the government, whether states can enforce the so-called insurrectionist ban, whether or not the former president actually incited an insurrection. How far do you think they might go? Well, in their order today, as Joan mentioned earlier, they didn't narrow down the list of questions. So probably it's just too early. Maybe we'll get that order that will tell us. But everything has to break the way of the challengers in order for Trump to be off the ballot. There are just so many ways that the Supreme Court could decide to keep Trump on the ballot that, you know, the odds have got to be with Trump here. But as I think about this, you know, Trump's opening argument is leave this to Congress. And that actually seems quite dangerous. What Trump is essentially saying is, let me run for office, let me potentially win election, and then come January 6, 2025, when Congress counts the Electoral College votes, let Congress decide if I'm eligible to run. I mean, that sounds like a recipe for real political instability. And I hope the Supreme Court's not going to embrace that argument. It would give them an out, but it would set up the country for a really dangerous period of time. And Jennifer, I mean, the court doesn't have to address all these issues. I mean, they could just ignore the whole question of whether this was an insurrection or not, couldn't they? 
They can. I mean, I think they have to decide on a ground that is common to all states. Like if they decided, for example, based on the plaintiffs here didn't have standing or there was some due process problem in Colorado, that's not going to be good enough because there are other pending challenges. They don't want to just do something on the Colorado case that doesn't apply to the other cases. But sure, they could decide, for example, that the office of the presidency, as Karen was saying, isn't included in the offices under this provision, right. and that would apply to all. But even on the insurrection thing, I mean, the 14th Amendment does not say that someone needs to be convicted of it, merely that they, they engaged in it. Right. And that is exactly what courts do, right? They take evidence. They make factual findings. They put those factual findings about what Trump did up against the legal definition in the statute or the section of the Constitution, and they make those judgment calls. I mean, that's what courts do every day, which is why it's pretty hard to say that they can't do that here. But I think we all know that the court is looking for an out here. I think they're looking for a way to keep him on the ballot uh, because they're worried about the chaos that will ensue if he's off. Yeah, Rick, I mean, out of all the sitting justices, only Clarence Thomas was on the Supreme Court for the Bush v. Gore decision back in 2000. Do you see parallels to that case? Well, here, you know, the, the, the stakes are different, right? Right now, we don't know if one of the leading candidates is eligible to run for office. That suggests we really need a decision soon so that Republican voters have the chance to know if the candidate they're considering supporting actually can serve as president. It's different than trying to deal with a recount. Uh, yes, the stakes are similar. The legal issues are very different. And, you know, as, as you think about what uh, it's going to mean for the country. Remember, there are other cases involving Trump that are coming to the Supreme Court, including a really important one about whether he can be criminally prosecuted or whether he's immune. That trial may take place depending on what the court does before uh, there, you know, we get to the general election season. That decision may end up being much more important than this one if, as I expect, the court is not going to kick Trump off the ballot. Karen, do you think Justice Thomas should have recused himself from the case. House Democrats have questioned whether he can be impartial given his wife's role in what was called the Stop the Steal rally. But a, an attorney for the plaintiffs in the case just told CNN that they have no plans to ask for Justice Thomas to bow out. Well, I, th I think it makes sense given the fact that she, his wife testified before the January 6th committee and gave testimony and evidence that she was very much involved in the planning of the rally and the insurrection. I think because that January 6th report was entered into evidence in Colorado and the Colorado uh, district court that decided this actually used the Jan 6 report as part of the finding as to why it was an insurrection. I think that that really makes it so there's a direct conflict for her and she cannot, uh, it's his wife. And I think he has to recuse himself. I think if this was, um, I, I think if it was any other court or any other judge, they would recuse themselves. But I think it's pretty clear here that there's a conflict. But that decision is solely up to him. Solely up to him. All right. Appreciate it. Karen Friedman, Nick Nifilo, Jennifer uh, Rogers, uh, Rick Hassan as well.